So today we're going to be installing the Go Power Sports new 780 CVT kit. Now, a 30 series is for more of your 212 engines and it can go up to 7 horsepower. I've had a built 212 somewhere around the 20 horsepower range and the 30 series actually handles that pretty good. And the 40 series is for your big block engines. It can handle up to 18 horsepower. That's what the manufacturer uh, rating is on it, but it can actually handle, you know, around 25 horse but you will start eating belts at that horsepower. Where the 780 CBT kit, you find these a lot on Gator side-by-sides and some other like Kawasaki mules had these style CBTs and they can handle up to 55 horsepower. You can see the belt difference with a three quarter inch belt on the 30 series, a 7 8 belt on the 40 series and an inch and a quarter on the 780. So you get that big beefy belt. It's gonna handle all the power we can push at it. Uh, with this Leaf N24 horse, so we're excited to slap this thing on and do a good trial run for Go Power Sports because these kits uh, should be available very soon for $5.95. Um, so, right around the $600 mark, you're going to get a torque converter that's really capable of handling the 670. I've had good luck with the 40 series on the uh, 670 that we had a while back. Um, over time, it would eat up belts, and the power the engine was pushing out would overstretch the driven pulley which is the rear pulley but uh, overall it handled it pretty well but you're going to want to go with the 780 so you're not caught with your pants down in the woods so let's get this thing slapped on the leaf fan and make some power i had to modify the 780 cvt because it interfered with the oil pump on this leaf fan engine to also install different barbs onto the pump to clear the jack shaft on the CVT as well. You will not have this problem if you're installing this CVT on a Predator 670. This life fan had a metric keyway size on the output shaft so we had to custom make a key to adapt to the Comet standard quarter inch size. This engine also had a shorter than normal output shaft so for safety we made an output shaft extension out of an old one inch axle. We made this cardboard template to make us a dashboard and I cut this out of a piece of painted uh, sheet metal that I had left over from some project. So now I'm going to do some little beads all the way around this thing, packing it in. Then I'll make a removable panel from the front so you can pull gauges and whatnot out. So tack this thing up and we'll be getting closer. Shouldn't have did that yet because I could have welded around the back side of these braces. You know. Hey, he got it. Woo, woo. So this is a 150 uh, go kart e brake. So now when when this is bolted down, we can pull this back. Oh, and it's spring loaded and it's actuating the little arm on the side of the caliper. You're not gonna be able to see anything, but trust me, it's there. So now I've made some mounts where this will mount up right here and look all sweet and whatnot. So I can bolt this down now. Looks like this one's a hair bit different than the one I used to mop this puppy up. Well, isn't that nice? Yeah, so now we got to mount the brake. We got to put our battery box right here. So I got to make a bracket to weld it up to the frame. And then once that's done, we're going to do like a really quick wire job just to be able to start the thing. No headlights, no gauges, nothing like that. And put oil in the engine. We got to build an exhaust. So it's getting really close. Uh, I built a dashboard. You see me weld in the dashboard. So I had to make these 
three quarter inch spacers for my oil pressure and my voltage gauge because they hit these brace, braces on the back of the dashboard. No big deal, I had that PVC, it worked out perfect. Then I have a headlight switch right there, like an automotive style one. Then I got my choke right here, so I can choke my engine, then I can turn it over with the key switch. Uh, there'll probably be more stuff in this dash over time, but for now, that's all we need. So we're gonna mount this e-brake, adjust it out, then we gotta lock our uh, lock collars and put keys in like our sprocket and our brake rotor. And then we'll either do exhaust or battery and wiring. Uh, but getting really close. Dan. Dan. Alan. Alan. David. David. <laughs> Mopar. Mopar. Carl. Carl. Greg. Greg. Chris. Chris. John. John. Stanley. Stanley. Scholar. Scott. Because. Because. Matt. Matt. Brian. Brian. Brad. Brad. Gary. Gary. Thoughts. Thoughts. Matt. Huckabee. Huckabee. As. As. Tyler. Tyler. Tank. Tank. Uh, Gerald. Uh, Gerald. <laughs> Gerald. <laughs> Nicholas. Nicholas. Jason. Lonnie, 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 Tank, Lonnie, David, Donnie, <laughs> Ronnie, Alan, Noah, Sean, Brent, Derek, Jim, Charlie, Sterling, Daniel, Ron, Gary, William, Sterling, Cooper. You got Sterling on there twice. Ooh, idiot. <laughs> what a loser. <laughs> Hair, Nate, Bruce, Joseph, Deep, Fred, Trike, Fang, 70. Alondre, Paul, Vaughn, Dan, Gary, Greg, Sam, Nothing, Andrew, and we're done. Patrons! Woo! 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 Alright, battery boxes. Keep the new one rolling. Keep the new one rolling! <laughs> Easy! Dropping stuff. <laughs> Easy. I'll show you. Ah! Armpit tissue. Cool. So what are you doing? So I weld this piece of sheet metal in here, put a little flat stock brace so the battery box will bolt to that right there. And uh, we still got to bore out that hole on the e-brake, get it bolted on. I'm letting this cool down, then we can start finishing up the quick wire job so we can run this puppy. My armpit tension. Oh. All the day long. Don't know what do. Don't you dare. So are you. Ah! So I got the header all made for this thing. You can see I had to patch up the the gaps where this is one inch tubing going into a two inch inlet. And there's a little bit of spatter on there we can knock off later, but uh, it looks pretty sick on there. It's gonna set about like that. And I gotta make a brace coming off the heads of the engine, you know, once this clamp is around there to hold that clamp in place. Then I may even make some braces on the heads, uh, on the headers to the heads, I don't know yet. So that's all made. 
that was a doozy. I didn't want to use one inch pipe uh, tubing on the exhaust, but I had to because I did, could not find enough things to make the one and a half inch. So it's gonna be a little, little bit restricted, but we're working with what we got. Now we're gonna pull apart the top of this uh, air box because we got to do our vacuum lines. If you remember the 670 had blow by pretty bad and I'm assuming this one's going to do the same thing so we bought an oil catch can that's baffled and that that baffled oil catch can is just going to keep all the oil out of our intake there's the top of that air box the 670 the original 670 that burnt when it burned, what we believed had happened was that they put really cheap fuel lines on Predators and these engines. Uh, we always smelt gas when the uh, like when we parked the Yerf Dog in the garage. We would smell it all through the house. Ever since we put that 670 on it, so it was leaking fuel somewheres. And I don't know if it was a stock pulse pump. They use a really high quality metal pulse pump on these engines, but it's located right here. So there's the pulse pump. We have the fuel inlet right there that has got a really ultra cheap filter on it. Could have been that filter leaking. This is the output to the to the carburetor, and then this is the vacuum line. This vacuum line right here is hooked to the top of the head. It's safe. There's no blow by that comes out of it because it's got a windage tray. But there's another port. If you look, they put the port on this uh, bowl of this carb or on this intake. But they don't have anything hooked up to it, so I'm glad I seen that because that would just be sucking dirty air into our carb and getting our jets dirty. If you also notice, this is a single barrel carburetor. I don't know what made Leaf Ham want to put a single barrel carb on it, but like the 670 has a, a two barrel carb. So we will be upgrading this carb later and uh, doing a few other things, but for right now it's fine. We're going to uh, take this line right here, this line. It's bad about pushing uh, oil out of it and into this bowl, which in return is going to cause it to start smoking and it's just going to dirty up your, your carb. So we may have to pull off this front cover. This wire hanging off of 670s or pretty much any V-twin goes to a plunger in the bottom of the carburetor. So when you turn the key off, 12 volts quits going to this and it uh, pushes this plunger up, which stops fuel from going into this. So if I touch this to a hot, you can hear that. I don't want this on uh, this particular engine, so we're going to pull the carb off, pull that little plunger out so we can get rid of this wire. And uh, yeah, so I just want to run my vacuum lines really nice to keep them out of harm's way. So now this goes right here. It just hooks and goes to the block right here. So, what we are going to do is pull this hose all the way off. And I'm probably going to put a new hose on there to run it because we're going to mount the oil catch can right in this area right here. We'll be able to put this as an inlet, then have this going to the uh, the intake and we can either block this off or run something else off of it like if we needed a I don't know but we'll have an extra bar we can either block off or run so let's get this puppy done so what I've done is I cut that hose that ran from the block to that car bowl in half and put me some uh, 5 16 line coming out of both of them so I can basically hook it up to the oil catch can that's going to catch any blow by and put clean air back into the carb uh, so we don't get any smoking then we got the fuel line running right here you can see it runs along the frame right there and i left enough slack so this engine can do its movement without binding up on the fuel line so the last thing i gotta do after that after mounting the gas tank up there is uh, that's a voltage regulator right here so it has two inputs the two brown wires come from the charging pools behind the flywheel and then this red fuse line is the uh, charging output so this will basically put out a solid 12 volt uh, signal instead of you know on mini bikes and stuff like the Coleman's they pulse the headlight that'll get rid of that and also put a safe uh, steady stream out to charge your battery where it won't overcharge your battery now I'm going to run that red wire to the the power side of the starter 
so I got a four gauge wire running from my battery to this post on the starter and when you hit this uh, hit the starter switch this red wire gets signal which basically opens up the circuit between these two giving the starter motor power so I can hook up the charging wire off of the voltage regulator to right there and that'll send it through that four gauge and charge my battery so we got to extend those two wires hook them up to the engine and then I got to make some type of throttle mechanism the one that was on this engine was made more for like a wood chipper so we need to make up some sort of pivoting bracket right here that'll pull this governor arm you know towards the back of the engine so we'll do that next we'll mount the gas tank after the throttle mechanism is built then we can put the header back on that I built and make some braces off the head for it and put it on there for good so let's get this puppy done So we made this little pivot. So when you start the engine, this governor is all the way forward, but as soon as you start it, it pushes it back like that. So we made this little pivot because uh, they didn't put one on it stop. Then we stole a throttle outlet from the 212. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. So on a Predator 670, again, you don't gotta make something like that because it comes with it already. So, uh, just a little FYI. Cross the red work bearing lock tight. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you. <laughs> I don't know about all that. Sorry. Brace? Yeah. Just well, no looks pretty sturdy. Well, they all do until heat gets to them. Vibration. Cracks a weld. You got an intake. Red beer bird. This one, huh? Exhaust leak. Then it warps the valve. And the valve comes in contact with the piston. Breaks the chip off. Flies his crankshaft. Crankshaft throws it over. It goes in the oil pump system. Clogs it up. It overheats and seizes up. We got oil in it. Check. Got the little plunger on the car. I did not take that out, by the way. I said I was going to do this. Okay. Well, probably yeah, charge the charge the battery. So we got the torque converter on. That was a little pain because you have to have to put these pulleys on together. You can rotate the belt around like you do on a 40 series, but it's extremely hard. And I don't like doing that because it can gouge up your belt on these rough edges. 
of this torque converter. We got to put the key in the driven torque converter pulley. So on these torque converters, you got to put basically you have to put both pulleys on at the same time. And that was a little headache. We didn't show it, but since we made that piece of shaft to go inside there and that custom keyway, we had to slide all of it in the torque converter and it was a son of a gun getting it on there. The only thing I'm hoping is we don't have any clearance issues when we flex the suspension on the CVT. We're going to have to really look at that. But, you know, if we hit something like this and it goes up, you get what I'm saying? It, this will get really close. So I don't want that. Tell you another thing, it's great. 100,000 subscribers. <laughs> yes, it <laughs> is. Thank you guys for all your support, that's for sure. That's for true. I don't know how good I was getting that. <laughs> that was awesome. Oh boy. The chain's floppier than a son of a gun. I'll tell you that much when he was riding across the yard. So everything's clear and perfectly fine. We're not getting anything, contacting anything. The only thing I was worried about was that, that drive pulley, but I can't They're tell. Close. I think it's doing nose dive. I think it's okay. <laughs> yeah. That was and good. I didn't do any braces on the exhaust, which I need to, because the heat over time will make them. So is the chain back. <laughs> no, it will be. And plus, knocking the chain off like that is going to make it stretch floppy. Yeah. yeah. Little bit of axle is the biggest weak one, so we bent this axle already 
Maybe jump in the driveway. Well, I think they want to hit. It might be jump in the driveway, but I think it's going to uh, hit the high end. The back end slam. So now we just need to basically pull the axle off and build those ears that sit right behind the tires. Now I think what's now going on. top in is pretty. I cut and it's just like, bah, 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 it's bad. It's worth it. <laughs> So as always, we jumped the driveway and uh, we did some other stupid stuff on the first test drive and we broke it. So we knew when we was building that engine section, the swing arm, that we needed to do those axle bearings that sit right behind the wheel hubs. But, you know, we didn't take the... 20 minutes to weld those on so that's a definite upgrade for that thing we need to pull that axle off get a new axle and uh, weld those hangers that sit right behind the wheel hubs we had to do that on the 670 because any exposed axle doing the things we do with these buggies we're going to bend the axle if you're just putting a one inch axle <clears throat> on your standard yard cart or something you don't have no worries but we're pretty aggressive on these things like so what bent that uh, wheel or the axle was when brandon went up really high the tires were still rotating pretty good and then it nailed that concrete and just came to a jolt and stop but uh you know no worries we'll fix it um we're probably going to take a week break on this buggy since you got to see it ride and stuff that's normally the way we do it around here is we uh, get it running we break it it sets for a few weeks and then we fix it because i want to get the deuce back in here we blew out a shock on the deuce and we need to address that and we also got a ton of other parts to throw on the deuce we got all the lighting from aux beam we got a roof rack a snorkel fire extinguisher a bunch of upgrades so we need to get i'm going to actually see if go power sport shocks will work on the deuce just for now because i don't want to spend the 200 for the monroe shocks that we're going to go on uh go with on that buggy but uh let me know what you think about this thing guys i know the shocks need moved forward because it is a little bit too stiff still but uh, you know that's what these tests are for to find out its weak points it is an ugly buggy i'm going to go ahead and say that we just did it because it was something sitting out back that we wasn't planning on using we was going to sell the frame just for super cheap so i was like why sell it we can test our first semi-independent out on this frame so uh, let me know what you think of it we're going to slide those shocks forward build those braces on the axle i think uh, it did kick the chain a few times and i think it's just an engine alignment issue we didn't get it lined perfectly good and that 420 normally stretches pretty good when you're running with uh, quite a bit of power like this v-twin also it needs geared down a little bit more uh, it needs to be a little bit lower geared so We'll get all that stuff addressed on a video very soon, but uh, the deuce is coming back in for now, and we got the shifter cart. We're going to finally get back to that thing, because I know you guys are wanting me to. Uh, I just don't like that frame, you know, and the caddy wampness that we did on it, but, you know, you guys want to see it, so I'm going to knock it out. Thank you guys for 100,000 subscribers. I can't believe, you know, when you start YouTube, you always want to get to that point, but, you know, it's... There's a lot of stuff on YouTube, so it's hard to, to be unique, and I don't really know if we're being unique. You know, we're trying to build. I'm I'm going through a bucket list that's in my head. You know, I'm getting to build the things that I've always wanted to build and, uh, you know, just build our fabrication skills up. So uh, who knows what the future holds. Thank you so much for supporting us uh, throughout the years. Thank you for the Patreons, uh, for donating to us to, to help, you know, continue doing these videos. Uh, we really truly appreciate this career and it's amazing that we're even able to do it So thank you again for a hundred thousand subscribers. Uh, hopefully we can get to 200 pretty quick. We'll see Sky's the limit, baby, but uh come back on the next one guys Let me know what you think about this buggy need some tweaks, you know, and uh, we'll get everything figured out We'll get it dialed in. We'll make it awesome. We love you guys and God bless Rebeard's Garage is powered by GoPowerSports.com. GoPowerSports has a huge amount of awesome go-kart and mini-bike parts, and when making your purchase, use the Redbeard discount code in the upper right-hand corner of your shopping cart to grab yourself a sweet deal. Hit that subscribe button and make sure the notification bell is on so you'll never miss another episode, and go check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and Pinterest to stay up to date with the channel. Guys, always come back to Redbeard's Garage. I'm out.